building a better Bay Area. Moving forward, finding solutions. This is ABC 7 News. Today, a group of large banks injected $30 billion into the San Francisco-based institution. The rescue package comes as First Republic has been battered by investors. There are concerns it might be the next bank to fail after Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Joining me now to discuss and better explain this First Republic rescue plan is Richard Del Monte, the co-founder and president of Del Monte Group based in Alamo. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Karina. It's nice to be here with you. Okay, uh, we have a lot of time because we are going to dig into this and try to understand everything that's happened in this last week. So first, can you explain how First Republic came close to being the third bank to fail in the last in less than a week and why it needed to be rescued? Sure thing. It's quite a story, isn't it? Wow, this whole thing has been amazing. So when those the other three banks failed over the weekend, we had Silvergate, we had uh, Signature Bank, and we also had Silicon Valley Bank all failed over the weekend. And when they failed, one of the one of the uh, tasks of investors is to figure out why did these banks fail and what were, what were the common denominators. And so they found one of the major common denominators was they had a lot of uninsured deposits in the banks. In other words, they didn't have FDIC insurance. Mm -hmm. And so that when when uh, those banks got into trouble, there was they were much more prone to have big runs on their uh, deposits, like the depositors basically pulling their money out. So they started looking for what other banks are in the same kind of situation. And First Republic was one of a handful that came right to the top because First Republic has a large base of business people. They cater to business people. And businesses tend to have uninsured balances that are in excess of whatever the FDIC limits are. So that's how they got on the, on the crosshairs. Hmm. Okay, and we saw big banks like Chase and Bank of America, they came together to help. How does something like that work? Well, it's interesting because a lot of these, many billions came out of these banks, and especially First Republic over the last week or so, and they went into the bigger banks because the people that have money in the banks thought, well, these are safer banks. So we're going to go there and we, we're not as, as afraid of them failing as we are of these smaller banks. And so what the banks did was say, we are going to show a vote of confidence in uh, First Republic Bank by putting our own money into the bank, into deposits. They actually put it into the bank accounts Actual of First money. Republic. Actual money, cash? Actual money. Okay. And importantly, the most important part was they made it very clear that those deposits are not insured, which means we trust this bank. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that was that was critical to build confidence back, you know, among people that have money in the bank and shareholders as well. And to that point, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said today that support by a group of large banks is welcome and that our banks are strong. After what happened this week to those failed banks, how should regular people who use big and small banks feel about the safety of their money? Like, what are you telling your clients? That's a great question. We found that there's been a lot of complacency, like people will have balances that exceed what the FDIC limits have been. Um, and we were kind of surprised about that. And so the, the real, the one thing to take away from this and, and this whole situation for the average person is never, never, ever have more than what the FDIC will insure for you. There's no reason to do that. You, why leave money uninsured and trust that the bank isn't going to fail. Is that and, the 250? You know, I know that some of the large, I'm sorry. Real quick, Pardon? that's $250,000. Is, is that the amount you're talking about? Yes. Well, it's different for different kinds of accounts. So a, a single person would be 250. Okay. And then a joint account, say a, a married couple would be 500,000. And then if families have living trusts and they have beneficiaries, like their kids are part of their trust, they can go all the way up to like a million uh, five. Okay. of insurance that's yeah. good to know uh, and so yeah. you were saying i'll let you finish um that people who have you know certain amount, you were saying that, can you uh, finish that thought that your advice to people who have a large amount yeah. of money in banks just never have more than the insured amount. There's just no point in doing that. There's so many other viable, you know, solutions to that, to have your money be protected and probably honestly get a higher rate of return uh, really safely than having it, having too much in a bank. 
Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's good advice. Uh, a lot of people are probably uh, rethinking their financial decisions right now. They should. Uh, they and should. let's go back to the failure of SVB. The government will help recover losses for customers, but what about people who had shares in the bank? Poof. <laughs> They've lost all their money. Oh. Um, and, you know, honestly, the government is, was interested, and rightly so, they're interested in protecting depositors who are innocents here. Well, they're innocents to the extent that they weren't they didn't do anything wrong other than they had too much money in there more than was insured but they shouldn't have to suffer because because of the shortcomings of silicon valley bank and the other banks that, that failed um you know and, and so the the if they made bad investments or investments that didn't work and didn't match the the needs of the of their depositors the people that should bear the risk of that fa failure are the shareholders Right. I mean, that they're the ones that it's their company. They took the risk. They lost. They lose money. Hmm. That's how that's the way it should work. Uh, we also know that there are major pension funds that had money invested in SVB CalPERS, the largest public pension yeah. fund in the U.S. is one of them. They had yep. 67 million in bonds with SVB, which it's actually yeah. a small percentage of their 444 billion in investments. But what happens to their bonds? Well, um, there's a chance that they might get something. They might get, re, you know, recover something because the people that lose the money are the uh, are the shareholders of the of the stock, but of the company. But the bonds, they're probably going to get paid back, you know, if if there's bonds out there because they're 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 creditors of the company, and the company does have a lot of assets. It's just that they they weren't the right kind of assets to keep the bank from failing, but they still have assets. I would imagine that those bondholders will get the lion's share of their money back, more than likely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Richard, I know you're going to be watching all of this closely. All of us are kind of now paying attention to what's going to happen with banks. Do you think things are going to yeah. start to calm down? What can you expect to see in the next few weeks? Yeah, great question, Karina. You know, it's going to take a bit. We have to restore confidence in the the, the banking industry of all industries needs to be needs to have confidence, right? Of the of the people right. that put their money there. You don't want to be thinking like, oh, tomorrow when I wake up, is my bank is my money not going to be there? My mm -hmm. paycheck, or you know, my bill's not going to get paid. So you can't have that. So you really have to have the confidence of of everybody in in the in the mix, especially the depositors. And so that's going to take some time. I think there's going to be some uh, some effects that are going to some steps that are going to be taken by the banking industry to police itself better and regulators are going to have to do a better job to make sure that they they were overlooking this whole problem that came up where the a mismatch between the investments the banks had and the depositors liabilities they had to them and so now they're going to have to look at that and say okay we got to make sure now that you that our your your investments match the, the deposits and if, if there's a big run on the bank you have to how are you going to come up with money to pay your depositors off that's that was probably missing in the mix it seems like so they're going to have to do that and so when that happens and people start feeling more confident and and there's no more banks failing, you know, after this, mm -hmm. uh, I think people will calm down and, and things will get back to normal. But it's going to take a little bit. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. And what yeah. about the government? I mean, is there anything more the government will do, can do to kind of help with the situation more than they've already done? Yeah, I've been impressed, actually, with the government steps that they've taken. They've done some creative things in this process, you know, to restore confidence. They were the ones that started the process of getting these banks to invest in, in First Republic today, for example. That was a very creative solution. But I think in the long run, they're going to have to show that they can regulate that because we keep having these shoes drop. In, you know, in the in the Great Recession, it was, all these toxic investments were in these uh, bank portfolios. So we got rid of that. But now we have another problem that we didn't foresee. So we have to fix that. And hopefully there won't be any more of these but you never know but um you, so you have to restore confidence and you also have to um get people to to believe that um whatever comes up will be uh addressed by the government and by the banks itself themselves and just have people really feel like this the industry is taking care of itself and we can trust it again all right uh richard Demonte, thank you so much for your time and spending so much time with us to explain uh, everything that's been going on over the last week we really appreciate it